Hello. Welcome to the short video on managing sticky sizes with ID8 Sticky for Revit. My name is Sash Kazaminijad, and I'll show you a couple of ways in which you can use the power of Microsoft Excel to easily break up a large sticky into multiple stickies for easy placement into Revit. Depending on the sheet size and configuration, most stickies will fit onto sheets without any issues. If a sticky happens to not fit on a sheet when linked into a Revit model, as shown here, you may consider breaking the sticky up into smaller stickies so that it fits onto one sheet. A sticky size is determined by the named regions in Excel. By default, ID8 Sticky uses the print area region for placement, as shown on your screen. To view the list of named regions in your Excel file, you can view them in the Excel Name Manager. You can see several of them in this example. Some of these types can be linked into Revit via ID8 Sticky. For a sticky that you want to break up, you can manually define your own named region to create smaller stickies, rather than using the default print area. Once created in the Excel file, those named regions will appear in the ID8 Sticky dialog box when placing a sticky. If you need to adjust the size of the stickies after placing them, you will have to go back to the name manager and adjust the reference rows manually and then update the stickies in Revit to see the changes. While you can manually set up your own name regions in Excel, you can also use some simple Excel formulation to help you define the length of each broken up sticky. To accomplish this consistency, you can use the offset formula in Excel. The advantage of this method is that you can input how many rows you want for each of the broken up stickies. When the stickies are placed, they will have the same number of rows, making them look a little more consistent. If you are interested in creating stickies of the same size, refer to the Excel file shown on your screen. Inside this Excel file, you will find a sample sticky and an instructions tab for setting up a sticky utilizing the offset formula. If you want to have a better understanding of the offset formula, you can look at the name manager to see how we approached the offset formula. If you plan on breaking up a sticky into smaller stickies and would like to use the same header for each sticky, then you can go to the page set up in your Excel file and define the rows to repeat at top. When this option is utilized, each of the stickies will have the same header, as shown here. Let's have a look at the sample file being used in Revit. For our example today, we're going to use this spreadsheet. You can see it here. I'm going to select the print area. And you can see it encompasses the entire spreadsheet. If this sticky ends up being too long, you may need to break it up into multiple stickies. You can manually do so by selecting cells like this and then giving them a name. In this case, we'll call this sticky1. This method here does not use any formulas. We'll select the next set of cells, and we'll call these Sticky2. If I come back up here, you can see the two stickies. When I select Sticky1, it highlights the cells, and when I select Sticky2, it highlights the cells. I'm now going to go to the Name Manager to review the data range for the stickies 1 and 2 and any of the other stickies created via the offset formula. I'll click on the Formula tab and then I'll click on Name Manager. Once inside, you can see stickies 1 and 2 and also columns 1 through 4. Any changes to the length of the stickies can be done over here. You can also see columns 1 through 4. These were created via the offset feature. Any minor adjustments to the stickies can be done over here as well. In this case, we only have four stickies. If you need to create a fifth one, you can click on the New button and create a formula for a column number 5. I'll hit Cancel to exit this dialog box, and then I'll hit Close to exit the Name Manager. I'm now going to show you where you can create the column headers for each of the stickies. Under the Page Layout tab, I'm going to go to the Page Setup panel and click on the Flyout. Under the Sheet, you can see the rows to repeat at top. In this case, it's 1 through 4. This will give me the repeat for each of the stickies when I place them in my Revit model. You can certainly change a range here if you need to. Let's now save this file and go back to the Revit model to see how the stickies behave. Now that I'm back in my Revit file, I'm going to start with stickies 1 and 2. These are the ones that I manually set up in the Excel file. I'm going to hit the Create button in Sticky, and then I'm going to browse for the Excel file. 
Once I find it, I'll select it and I'll hit open. I don't want to use the print area because the sticky may end up being too long, so I'm going to use sticky 1. This is the first broken up sticky. I'll hit OK, and you can see it placed within my title block. I'll move it over here. I'm going to repeat the process for sticky number 2. I'll select Excel file, and under the worksheet region, I'll pick sticky 2. And just like that, I have a broken up sticky. When I zoom in, you can clearly see that the number of rows differ between stickies 1 and 2. This is because I manually created these without using the offset feature. In order for me to make any adjustments to the number of rows between stickies 1 and 2, I'll have to go back to the corresponding Excel file and adjust those values under the name manager. While this is pretty easy, it does take a little bit more work. Let's place a couple of stickies that were created using the offset feature. I'll go to create, I'll pick the same Excel file, but this time I'll pick columns 1 and 2. Once placed, and when aligned side by side, you can see the number of rows match. This is because I used the offset formula and defined the number of rows using that formula. You can now see how consistent these two stickies are. The same will be for columns 3 and 4 if placed in this Revit model. I decided to go back to the Excel file because I wanted to make some minor adjustments to the number of rows for each one of my stickies. For this example, I'm referencing the ones that were created using the offset feature. If I want to adjust stickies 1 and 2, I can do so right over here. But since columns 1 through 4 were created using the offset feature, I don't have to make any changes here. I'm going to go to the Instructions tab. You can see highlighted over here is 15 rows. You can see this is the page length formula right here. This is what's getting inputted into the offset formula. I'm going to change this value to 25, and then I'll hit the Save button. Now I'll show you how easy it is to refresh the stickies in the Revit file. Now that the Excel file has been saved, Sticky's going to recognize that it is out of date. You can see that right here for columns 1 and 2. I'll hit the Update button and watch the stickies grow. We now went from 15 rows to 25 rows. You can see the huge advantage of using this simple offset formula. This way our stickies could be consistent in size. Any changes will require us to simply go back to the Excel file and change the number of rows to meet our needs. To learn more about ID8 Sticky and our other Revit-based products, be sure to visit us at www.id8software.com. On our website, you will find a wealth of help information, links to our blog posts and live classes, and videos on using all of our products. If you are interested in trying any of our products, I encourage you to download a trial version. Thank you for your time, and we hope you found this information helpful.